Hello everyone, this game can be overwhelming at the start, easily get lost to not knowing what to do is better. At the same time, invasion pressure is building up over time. You may panic for the first time being invaded. There are 10 tips for you to have a better start. All of these tips are focusing on early to mid game only. If you really don't wanted any spoiler, please stop the video now. About invasion, you can watch my other video. This guide is not going to cover about invasion. Ok, let's start. Having an efficient base layout in the early to mid game can greatly speed up your base development. Start by building a ladder right next to your initial storage. This storage will serve as the center of your base, and the ladder will act as its backbone. Leave one tile empty on both sides of the ladder. This space is reserved for a lift, which is three tiles wide. Ensure that the tiles on both sides of the ladder are built at the same height level. You can then construct production buildings near the ladder. When the ladder is eventually replaced with a lift, your rats will be able to move vertically much faster. You can safely uproot the tree near the initial storage to free up more space. When you uproot a tree, it drops a seed that can be planted again later. Your main source of wood will be tree skin tiles. By simply digging, exploring, and expanding, you will never run out of wood. Therefore, researching the logging camp is a noob trap, and it's recommended not to research it. Here's a bonus tip, you can dig the tile below the tree without any loss. You will still obtain wood and a seed, but faster. For gathering buildings such as the gathering camp, hunter's hut, or water tank, workers don't need to physically reach the building to perform their tasks. As long as there are resources within the building's range, the location of the building doesn't matter. We can take advantage of this by saving prime placement spots for production buildings. Build these gathering buildings far away from the ladder, and set their range to 40. This arrangement works well. Wild wheat and rabbits are your best friend. Build a gathering camp and limit it to harvesting wheat only, and you'll be fine for a long time. However, wheat doesn't grow during winter, so I recommend hunting rabbits as soon as possible. Yes, your rats may get injured over time, but with the support of beds, it takes a long time for them to be knocked out. Replace a better rat at fighting at that time. Since we are hunting rabbits early and consumption of food is low due to the low population, build a butchery to produce leather and a wood workshop to produce tools. Remember to set production limits. Then, set up a single tannery to produce both leather sacks and shoes. A single tannery is enough to support more than 50 rats. Leather sacks provide plus 2 carry capacity and shoes provide a 20% movement speed bonus, making them the best options. Moreover, this setup avoids unnecessary researches. This setup fulfills the necessary requirements to level up to the middle class with minimal labor while providing the best buffs. This is a fantastic new feature introduced in the latest patch. In the Production Buildings setting tab, there is a toggle for mass production. I always set it to true because it significantly increases the efficiency of my base. Many recipes only require 1 to 3 materials each, but a rat can carry at least 3, 5 with leather sacks, and even more if they have higher strength. Mass production halves the transportation time, as rats now only need to transport once to produce twice the amount of goods compared to before. From level 2 prosperity to the late game, simply build a code stone to set up two policies, and you won't go bankrupt. The first one is the tax law. Use the default civil tax type, set the limit to wealth over 700, and tax amount to 20% of their wealth. The reason of having this setting is that if you're playing on normal difficulty, you start with 10,000 gold, which is enough to allow 20 rats to upgrade to the middle class. Each rat need to have at least 500 gold to not getting demoted. Charging a 20% tax on rats with a wealth over 700 doesn't demote them. If you're playing at a slower pace or on hard difficulty, lower the wealth limit to be taxed to prevent bankruptcy. The second policy is the welfare law. Use the default periodic subsidy type, set the amount to 100, and the limit to 100 as well. You can increase this value when you have more money. 
since rats need to pay for foods, services or necessities. This ensures that your jobless rats never run out of money. If you're really playing at a slow pace and running out of gold, you can click on rats to collect taxes manually. However, it's not difficult to research and build the Shrine of Rat. By paying 500 gold to the Shrine, you can now automatically collect taxes just by passing by your rats. The first joy service building is the circus, but it has a problem. The workers themselves cannot use the service. One simple solution is to build two circuses, but that can be expensive in terms of both labor and resources. Instead, I suggest leaving the clown rats unhappy for a while. Once you research and build the music stage, you'll have two joy providers. The music rat can find joy in the circus, while the clown rat can find joy in the music stage. Yes, they still cannot use their own service, while others can enjoy both. It should be sufficient to prevent them from complaining or causing a riot. Please note that only mid and high class rats can use music stage by default. You need to set a commercial law to enable music stage for every class of rats. Set type to structure usability, choose music stage, and it's done. In the early game, you won't have enough slots to set up a good schedule. The tips here is do not touch the schedule at all. Rats will work when their needs are fulfilled and will stop working when they need to eat or relieve themselves. You will need more rats and a higher prosperity level to establish a schedule that improves your base without creating additional problems. Personally, even in the late game, I still don't set any schedule policy because it can be a tedious process to configure the settings in the current state of the game. Rats can sometimes act foolishly, leading to accidental deaths. There are two main situations where this can occur. The first one is when replacing a floor of natural tiles. If you simply drag building tiles over them, rats may fall and perish. To avoid this, build one tile and then skip one like this. This ensures that there is always a tile nearby when they dig preventing any rat casualties. The second is water gathering. Water gatherers may not always collect water from the surface. Instead, sometime they dive down to the bottom, which can cause them to take damage over time and eventually perish from drowning. To prevent this, adjust the range of the water gatherer carefully so that it only touches the edge of the pool. Alternatively, you can set up a rain pool that no path to get to inside. Rats can gather water from the outside, eliminating the risk of drowning. Thanks for watching.